Hey guys, Data Science Jay here, and today I want to go over what it takes to become a machine learning engineer. And the demand for AI and machine learning specialists continues to surge with estimates of it growing 40% year over year by 2027. Now, whether that's true or not, it's pretty clear that there is an AI wave coming as companies are increasingly rolling out new AI products. So today, what we want to talk about is how you can be part of that wave by becoming a machine learning engineer and what you need to do to prepare for your interview. One thing to note is that ML engineers generally are also safeguarded from a lot of the layoffs. They are the most in-demand position right now. However, getting this job is actually really, really tough. So to start out, let's talk about the machine learning engineering role, what it is, what you do, and how it differs depending on what kind of company you join. Typically, machine learning engineers are hired to essentially productize machine learning models and deploy them in production. Now, as of late, a lot of that has been AI and LLM-based models, in which there's been this new term called AI engineer that everyone's kind of been gravitating towards. ML engineer, AI engineer, it's all the same. Whatever they're calling this role, all a machine learning engineer does is develop and deploy these machine learning models to solve business problems. Depending on what kind of company that you join, the ML engineering role might differ. For example, if you're working at a big tech company, bank company, you're responsible for developing, deploying, and essentially just handling one part of the process of the model deployment. But if you're working at a smaller company, you're gonna be doing every single little thing. Right. So that means actually working with the data scientists or there might not be a data scientist to actually build a model, uh, doing the data engineering portion where you're actually going in there and taking data from like the database, moving into a caching layer so that you can actually pull that data very quickly when you're training the model or when you're actually deploying it. But at bigger tech companies, you're mostly only focused on the experimentation and the deployment. You have to have understanding of like the latest basically trends on what's happening in terms of research AI development, because at the end of the day, because you're at a bigger tech company, you have to be able to scale, build these models with more performance and more accuracy. So bigger tech companies are always looking for that extra edge. Whereas in, in startups and smaller companies, they, they care more about breadth, right? They can't just hire, you know, individualized, specialized people because they're really expensive. They just want to hire one person who's really good at a breadth of services. The key thing to note is that at bigger companies, ML engineers are much more specialized. Potentially they've worked in that role before in the same industry, maybe doing the exact same thing at one company and now doing it at this other company. Whereas at startups and smaller companies, there's much more breadth of focus for ML engineers. There's still not gonna be data scientists where they're like building dashboards, analyzing data, maybe even building the models, but they will have a far more breadth of knowledge in terms of where to actually engineer and put the model, where to work with the data engineers or actually do the data engineering themselves. Let's say that you are an ML engineer at Google. You're gonna be focused on search relevancy and probably on ad bidding and op ad optimization. This is gonna involve a lot more natural language processing, right? Google uses BERT, right? A natural language processing model that they just you know, implemented. They also care a lot about performance and speed, right? So this means essentially making sure that the searches are really fast, right? So they're, they're not gonna build like some deep neural net, you know, type of model and then have it be slow because then that would cost them tons, you know, billions of dollars. If you're working as an ML engineer at JP Morgan Chase, for example, right, then you don't really care about performance as much. I mean, fraud, right, like this, you still have to build models on the back office to actually detect fraud, but they care way more about the accuracy of the fraud model than like sending you an alert about a credit card transaction that you think is like uh, fraudulent within like microseconds, right? They, they can spare some seconds in terms of sending you that alert, whereas Google cannot. So different roles at different companies probably care about different things. The last thing I want to add is that if you're working in algorithm trading, then yes, they will care about speed at that point. I mean, it's kind of the name of the game. In general, one thing you just want to note about the ML engineering role, it really does matter about understanding which kind of companies that you're applying to. And so to really understand each role, I would highly suggest using interview query to check out the different company interview guides that we have for the ML engineering roles there. Each one is very different. Each one is very specialized and we write a lot of in-depth guides and we spent a lot of time on writing these in-depth guides so that you guys have an understanding of what the role is going to be like at this company. So let's jump into the second part, which for me is around assessing technical knowledge and skill set of the ML engineer. While ML engineers are not required to have uh, product knowledge or make product related decisions, they still have to have an understanding of what kind of business problem that they're actually solving and who their users are. In general, they have to have a product mindset when they're applying AI into the real world. 
involves a couple things, right? This involves having user-centric thinking. This involves having business alignment, understanding what the business problems are. Ultimately, it's also about being able to iterate. Interview query coaches always try to instill in the candidates that are going through the job search or interview process, think about how you can apply different kinds of frameworks to a lot of these case study questions around machine learning projects that you've done in the past and also case studies that the companies will give you. Design thinking is super helpful here. How can you empathize with the user, right? What their problems are. If we're thinking about the problem and we think, for example, that a user cannot find the best place to travel to, is that an actual like machine learning problem or is that a design problem? So a lot of the times it might not even be an ML solution that is actually the right solution. Then we, we're talking about ideation. If we have identified that it is an ML solution, then we have to think about what kind of ML solution we're going to implement. Right? Are we going to use deep learning? Are we going to use a supervised learning out of it? Are we going to just use an LLM, right? So we're ideating, we're thinking about new ways to solve this. Uh, then prototyping. So now we, we're talking about how to prototype a solution. How do we build it locally? How do we get that data? How do we look at some results manually and see if it works out all right? And then lastly, uh, testing. So continuous testing is really important here. Uh, we really want to make sure that as we go through the testing process, we're not just you know, deploying something again and just releasing it, we're actually going through to figure out, you know, what our hypothesis is, how we can validate that our solution actually solved their problem and what we have to do from there on. The next thing that we want to focus on is assess your skills for the interview process. Generally, an ML engineer requires a few things, right? You have to understand Python, maybe some other languages like Scala. And you need familiarity with like the different libraries out there, TensorFlow, Keras, Scikit-Learn, obviously PyTorch, maybe Langchain if you're working on a lot of uh, AI stuff. And generally you need a deep knowledge of like the different kinds of machine learning algorithms and their concepts and how they're applied, right? So when do you apply deep learning? When do you apply something more like random forest? If you feel that you're lacking in some of these technical skills, really go back and try to learn some of the concepts first and hone your skills before you're actually looking to apply at these technical companies. And specifically also look to see if you have the right background or skill set, some of these ML engineering roles at some specific company. So for example, if I'm applying to Chase, right, I'm using this as an example again, I want to make sure that I have really good uh, either time series and forecasting skills because a lot of the stuff that they work on, right, is going to be around handling seasonality, trend analysis for financial indicators and forecasting of revenue and other things like that for M&A. Or if I'm interviewing for the risk management team, I want to see how much I've done in fraud, right? So do I have fraud projects? Have I done anything around detecting fraud or identifying it? The third tip and the third thing that we ask people to do after they've done the first two steps of looking at the role, assessing their own skills, and then to then kind of practice the skills that they're lacking, right? And also prepare for the interview. If you've actually gone through the process of applying to jobs, you have a few interviews lined up, then you really got to find out where you're weakest and also kind of practice the main skills that are tested in the technical interview. And so for an ML engineer, that's generally two or three things. It's going to be one, coding, and then system design. And then lastly, probably a little bit more behavioral stuff as well. So for coding interviews, uh, they play a crucial part for the ML engineer role. There's really no way to get around it. You know, ML engineers are kind of like the top of the top in terms of software engineering quality, in terms of also pedigree. And so they really expect you to be um, like a whiz at leak code, interview query type problems. And so specifically, we're also talking about the algorithm problems, right? So uh, you're talking about the traveling salesman type problems, Tower of Hanoi, being able to solve these algorithm type questions shows that you actually have really good um, algorithmic sense, as well as having like an understanding of kind of how a lot of these machine learning algorithms might be built, right? And so one other thing that we're also seeing for a lot of these roles is, is asking them to kind of code up a lot of these deep learning, uh, supervised learning algorithms from scratch. So not using scikit-learn or anything. You know, if you're not prepared to kind of grind on a lot of these coding problems and get really good, then I wouldn't advise you to go for the ML engineering role at different companies. One of the things that these companies really care about is that you have top-notch code quality. In general, the ML engineer is a very senior role. So it really matters about having becoming a very good software engineer. It's really less about kind of machine learning concepts because a lot of that can be learned, I think. And it's much more about shipping really clean quality code. If you can't handle grinding, interview query, leak code style problems, then I wouldn't recommend this role. This is just how it is. Unless you're a genius competitive programmer or something like that.
It's just the nature of this role and how coveted it is and how much it pays. The second thing just to practice is the system design level interviews, right? And these are going to be much more case study focused. They're going to be talking about how you can design scalable and efficient systems at different companies. For the most part, it'll be split into two types, right? It'll be a lot of it will be around your past experience designing these systems. And the second one will be more about the case studies of solving like a system design case study at their company or maybe a fictional or like a, you know, big tech company where it's quite obvious, you know, how to solve it. So something like YouTube recommendation algorithm, Spotify discover weekly algorithm, all of these are questions on interview query, by the way, that you can try and practice. At the end of the day, they're really trying to figure out, you know, how you solve, uh, figure out trade-offs, right? And it comes back to that idea of the framework that we set in the very beginning, right? Like how do you apply the framework of understanding what the user problem is, what the user journey is like, what the business problem is, and then be able to use that to design the best system or solution. One problem that I feel like is really good indicator of this, uh, it's called type ahead search on interview query. And in this problem, we are building an autocomplete algorithm for Netflix. One of the considerations we have here, right, is how much do we care about performance? How quickly do we have to recommend movies? Or how much do we care about accuracy here in terms of getting like the movie that they're intending to see as early as possible when we type ahead? There's always like these accuracy, performance, uh, latency kind of trade-offs that we have to make. And so a lot of it is about like how understanding how you think as a candidate in terms of making these trade-offs and how you can justify making, you know, a specific trade-off because at the end of the day, our solution is not going to cater to everyone. One of the things that I've also noticed is that for machine learning engineering roles, the more senior you are, the more behavioral the interview will become. A lot of the interviews will focus basically your past experience, specifically your specialization in terms of understanding, you know, what you've done in the past and what your role and responsibility actually was. And once you kind of get there, once you've proved that out, if, especially if you are senior, then a lot of the interview becomes more behavioral around culture fit and how you work with others, right? So. They're not questioning your technical knowledge anymore unless, you know, you're some psychopath and you're basically lying about your entire resume. But they really want to know once they've validated your technical knowledge, how well you can actually fit in with their team and how well you work with the stakeholders at large. Are you a team player, right? Do you work on your own? Are you good at mentorship? All those things. Generally also, it's pretty much understood that machine learning engineer roles are generally pretty senior. For junior roles, there are some associate positions, but it's much harder because as a junior uh, engineer, you haven't been kind of like the lead or worked on any kind of projects where you've dealt with like billions and billions of data points, right? And so a lot of the times, you know, especially for these bigger tech companies, they're expecting uh, senior roles for the machine learning engineer. Just to recap, for every kind of machine learning engineering role, the company, the size, all that kind of depends on like what you're going to be doing at the actual company and your, what your day-to-day -day role is going to actually be like for the machine learning engineering, AI engineering role. Then it's really important to assess your own skill set, develop the mindset of understanding how you're going to approach solving these problems, understand what your skills are. And then lastly, stay focused, embrace the challenge, practice your interviewing skills, simulate your interviews with uh, our AI interviewer on interview query or practice interview questions on interview query as well. Check out interview query. It's a company that I co-founded over five years ago uh, that has now scaled to hundreds of thousands of users on the platform, all practicing for their machine learning engineering interviews, as well as data scientists, data analysts, and you know, the rest of those interviews as well. Uh, we've just launched a few new interesting features. We have the AI interviewer, which you can use to practice and simulate a real life interview without actually talking to a human person. So check that out. But also we have a lot of the kind of new natural language processing, ML engineering, case study type interview questions as well. And you can kind of jump into the community, check out their comments, and also read the official solution as you're working through your interview practice. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.